as to how you can be saved, brought to a, a right place with God, the right uh, standing before God. And of course, well, that's needful now, you know, before uh, well, before you breathe your last, it's too late then, game's over then, no, no it's now, while you have the breath of life in you, that you need to get right with God. So if you like to have a copy of God's Word, uh, read the good news to yourself and see uh, the great things that God has done in order that a sinner like you and like me might be saved by the grace of God. By grace, of course, the Bible says that a person is saved without grace, you know, without God's free gift. Salvation is a gift, you know, Jesus. His righteousness, anyway, it's, all, uh, here, right? it's all the gift of God, you know, and uh, God gives it to whosoever he pleases to. But grace, you know, grace and religion are not the same. They're not the same. You know, some people, they make this mistake, you know, because, uh, well, they think because a person's religious, you know, maybe because they wear religious clothes and do religious things, you know that uh, well, they must be holy people, they must be good people, they must be, uh, well, they must be in some measure, they must be favored uh, by God. But that's not really, that's not where it's at, that's not what God says, you know. He says, blessed, favored, he says, of they who are poor in spirit, those who mourn for their sins, those who, by the grace of God, have been brought to see what they never saw before, to see themselves as sinners before God, to see themselves as men and women who have offended God, offended His love, offended His law, and they see themselves as being, well, being in need of God's help, and they cry out to Him. And of course, well, the Bible assures you that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that's Jesus, the Son of God, shall be saved. So, you see, there's the difference, you know, between religion and the grace of God, the love of God in Jesus Christ, and there's the difference, you know, between the grace of God and even those who profess, those profess, you know, to be, to be a Christian, Jesus, no, he says, not everyone, Listen up to his word, if you will. He says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I tell you, friends, 
I tell you, those are the most awful words in all the Bible, in all the Holy Scripture for a man or woman to come before God in that day and for Jesus to say to them, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. That's dreadful because that departure from Jesus then is forever and of course, well, into that place that the Bible calls hell, eternal, everlasting punishment because they never, they were never known of Jesus, never known by him. And that raises another point, you see, it's not you knowing him, it's him knowing you, that's the important thing. Does he know you? And does he know you in grace, in love, in favor, in forgiveness, in pardon? Does he know you? Has he blessed you? That, my friends, that's the most important thing. It's not, uh, it's not your reception of Jesus. You must receive him, but that's not the important factor. Has he received you? Has Jesus received you? Because that's what it means. That's what it means, my friends, to be a child of grace a child of love, a child of God, not just merely professing as the name of Jesus Christ. There are many people, and of course many religions that do. Islam professes in a measure in a wrong way, but it, prof it professes the name of Jesus. And the Church of Rome professes the name of Jesus, but they're all professors, they're all vain, empty professors. They don't know him, and they're not known of him. That's the difference, my friends. Grace or religion, grace or profession, empty profession, says Jesus. The false prophets, he dismisses them, and now he dismisses the false professors, those who never knew, those who never had the grace of God imparted to them. The grace of God, the gift of God, you see, is given by God. And is given to those, well, whom he wills to give it to. It's his good pleasure to give it to some. But it's his good pleasure not to give it to everyone. You might ask the question, you might say, well, why isn't everybody saved? You might say, why, why aren't we all children of God? Didn't he make us all after all? After all, yes, he did. But my friend, he has chosen in his wisdom and good pleasure, he has chosen to save some. Not everyone, says Jesus. Not everyone. And not everyone who calls on his name, who professes his name, that is, only those who by grace, to whom God imparts grace, saving grace, that is, particular grace, because God gives it particularly to those whom he has chosen. Not to everyone, says Jesus. Not everyone. So you see, you can be a member of a church. You can be baptized. You know, you can be a regular attender of the church and you can have head knowledge about Jesus. You can know about him. Maybe you've been instructed from the Bible. But head knowledge and heart knowledge aren't the same thing. It's a heart knowledge of Jesus that you need, an experimental need, knowledge of Jesus that you need. Experience, my friends, having been born again, says Jesus. He must, he says, be born again. And I believe it, my friends. Jesus says it, the Bible says it, God says it, and I believe it, my friends, and I preach it to you. He must be born again. The grace of God must be sovereignly imparted to you. So you see, you can go about the world and many people do. I was baptized as a Christian, maybe in infancy, maybe later on in life, I was baptized in water. I tell you all the water in the Atlantic Ocean will not shift one single sin from you. Only the grace of God will remove your sin in Jesus Christ. Only the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses from sin. So all the water in the world 
doesn't matter how you were baptized, when you were baptized, it means nothing unless God has imparted his saving and particular grace to you. And you can be a member of a, oh, a big swell church. You can, you, maybe you say to me, well, our church, you know, is a big one. And we have all kinds of things going on. And we do all kinds of things, you know. And we do a lot of social work and stuff like that. That's not the business of the church, my friend. The business of the church is preaching the gospel. Is doing what I'm doing here today. Not social work. But my friends, it doesn't matter what kind of church you belong to. It might be a big one. It might be a small one. It might be a good one. It might be a bad one. But membership and attendance in a church does not impart grace to you. God does that himself to whomsoever he pleases to impart his grace to you. And all the knowledge you can study the Bible one end to the other. You might be a veritable theologian. You might be able to correct others with regards to what they believe concerning the Bible. But it's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's not in your heart. You've never been brought to an experience of being born again, of having the life of God in your soul, and the love of God in your heart. It's all just empty. It's just a vain profession of religion. It's dead, my friend. You might as well belong to Islam. You might as well belong to Rome. It would, wouldn't make any difference. It's just dead, empty professing, dead, empty religion. Devoid of the grace of God, devoid of the love of God, and devoid of any reconciling knowledge to God. Does he know you? Or will he say to you in that day, will he say to you in that day, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. You can even be a preacher. You can even be doing what I'm doing here today, my friend. Maybe you could be a pulpiteer. Maybe, maybe a pastor. Maybe a minister of some grand church and you occupy a pulpit Sunday by Sunday and you preach to others. Maybe you do it on a street corner like myself here and my colleague today but you've never known the grace of God. You speak to people from the Bible and you don't even know what you're talking about because you've never experienced the love and the grace of God in His Son, Jesus Christ. You're as dead as the people to whom you preach. You preach the Word of God and you do wonders. But Jesus says to you, at the end when you're finished, and you stand before the judgment throne of Christ, he says to you, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. You can even use his name. Perhaps you say, I call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, and I do it regularly, I do it frequently, but do you know the name? Do you know the person back of the name? Do you know him in grace and love? Do you know him as your savior? Do you know him as the one who has put life into your soul? Everlasting, eternal life into your soul. Do you know him as the one, my friend? The one who has loved you and given himself for you. Vain profession, empty profession of religion any religion, but even of Christianity, even of the gospel, even of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you call upon that name, but you blaspheme the name. My friend, without grace in your heart, without the grace of God in you, without the grace of God imparted to you, without the love of God in your soul, 
My friend, you call upon that name, you take the name of the Lord God in vain. No small thing to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Depart from me. I never knew you. You worker of iniquity, he will say to you in that day. The question is, says Jesus, do you do God's will? Are you righteous? Have you been declared righteous by God through faith in his son Jesus Christ? A living faith, that is. Has he taken your filthy rags off you? Your righteousness is. And have you humbled yourself under the mighty hand of God? Acknowledging your sin, repenting of your sin, and coming to God for righteousness, his righteousness, the gift of his righteousness that is given to faith. And live, and live out of that faith, live in obedience to God's will, doing God's will, not in order that you be saved, but doing God's will because you have been saved by the grace of God, the love of God. Oh, that passes knowledge. Do you know that love? Has he come? Has he baptized you? Not in water. Has he baptized you in grace? Has he baptized you in his love? Has he baptized you in his merciful kindness? Has he dismissed your sin? Has he sent your sin so far away and you're so full of gratitude and thankfulness because of what Jesus has done for you? You live in obedience to him. Is that you? Because unless it is, in that day, my friend, this is grace, my friend, my dear, not religion. There's a day coming, you're going to stand before Almighty God, and He's going to judge you and I. And in that day, if you're not found in the righteousness of His Son, Jesus will say to you, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Only, only God's righteousness will enable us to get a pass in that day when we stand before God. Yeah. You know the grace of God, man? You're a Christian, man? You are? You love Jesus? Praise God, then. Praise God. God bless you. So you see, my friends, grace and profession, grace and religion, they're two different things. They're two different things. It's the grace of God. Grace is gift, you see. It's gift, you know, it's, it's, it comes from the Latin word gratis, free gratis, you know, grace, amazing grace. You sing the song, but you don't know the grace. You've never experienced the grace. The world sings it, amazing grace. They love the song. They make money out of it, but they don't know what they're singing. They're blind to it. They're strangers to it. They're alienated from the grace of God. So you can sing the song, you see, but not know. Never know, never experience that grace, the free gift of God in His Son, Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He said to the world, here's the gift of my Son. What will you do with Him? And the world with one voice cried out, crucify Him away with them, he's not fit to live. But in the midst of that world, there's a people who will believe. A people of God, a people to whom God will impart grace. And they'll be brought to an understanding and an experience of that grace. They will be brought to see the merciful and to experience the merciful kindness of God in forgiving their sins, everything that they ever did, forgotten, blot, blotted out, remembered by God no more because of the grace, the free gift of God. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord, whom I declare to you here this afternoon. So do you do the will of God? Do you walk, do you live in obedience to God? Call upon the name of Jesus and live in your sin. It was said of Jesus, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. From their sins. Jesus.
Jesus did not come to make you wealthy, healthy, prosperous. He came to save his people from their sin, not in their sin. You profess, you call upon the name of Jesus, and you walk in iniquity, you walk in lawlessness, you still do the drunk and the drugs, the fornicating, the blasphemy, you still do the iniquity. My friends, you profess the name of Jesus in vain. You must be born again, brought to an experience of God's grace. So has grace come to you? Has grace come to you? Has God dispensed His grace upon you? And as He brought in that grace, as He brought you the gift of repentance, it's a gift, you see, repentance unto life. It's not an ugly, it's not a bad word, it's a good word. It leads to life, repentance unto life. Repentance from death unto, towards life. Then, has he given you in his grace, has he given you the gift of faith, real faith, not a plastic faith, not an empty profession of faith, but a real faith, a living faith, a faith that you live out of day by day and that you intend to die by. It's faith to live and faith to die. What a little preacher, he said once, he said, I have people, he said, they die well. What will your end be like? What will your dying, what will your breathing, your last be like? Full of dread and fear? Or will you be drugged up to the eyeballs so that you don't know, well, you don't know what's happening? You don't know, you've got no awareness that you're about to step into the presence of the judge. No awareness. No consciousness that you're about to stand before Judge Jesus. Has he given you? Has he imparted grace, repentance and faith? A faith, that, a faith, my friends, you're willing to die for? That kind of faith? Of course. Well, of course, you can be religious. And you, sir. you can be religious. You can be religious and you can say, well, I, I would die for my religion. You may, maybe perhaps you'd be an Islamist. Maybe you'd be a Muslim and you say, I would die for my faith. Yes, but not, not to the glory of God. Not out of love for God. Not, a, not out of love for your enemies. You belong to that religion. You're full of nothing but hatred for your enemies. Nothing but hatred there. God is godless religion, my friend. There's no grace, there's no love, there's no power, there's no real faith in God there. A true and living faith. And a faith out of which you live and do all, everything for the glory of God and the praise of His Son Jesus Christ. But if this is not you, if grace has not yet been imparted to you, maybe this is the day, who knows? You hear of the grace of God, you hear of the gift of God. You hear of his beautiful son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only good man who ever walked the face of this earth. And the world crucified him, nailed him to a cross, but he came in love in order that you might be baptized in the love of God. Know the love of God by experience. That you might be born again. Given eternal life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who knows, maybe today he came to his own, but his own received him not. He came to the world, but the world received him not. But to them, them that received him, to them who believed on his name, he gave the right, the power, the authority to become children of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So you see there will be many, many, many claims will be made in that day 
before the judgment throne of God, says Jesus, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done wonderful works? Oh, the judgment day will reveal many strange things. There will be people, my friend, who will make these claims to have done wonderful things in the name of Jesus. Many who will have Bibles in their hands, I tell you. And Jesus will say to them, Depart from me. I never knew you, ye worker of iniquity. The rottenness in that day before the judgment throne of God, the rottenness of their religion will be exposed. It will be revealed, my friend. The murdering Islamists and the pedophile Roman priests, it will all be exposed in that day before the judgment throne of God. And Jesus will say to them, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. I never imparted grace to you. You never loved me. You never did what you did out of love for me and the glory of God. Depart from me. I never knew you. Ye worker of iniquity. Oh, they will claim we prophesied in your name, Jesus. We prophesied. We told of things to come, and Jesus will say to them, You prophesied lies. You prophesied lies. And the touchstone you see will be His Word, the Bible. Muslims will say, We declared your word in all the world, Jesus. And Jesus will say, No, you didn't. You declared a false religion. You were blinded yourself by your foolish religion. And you, and you blinded many thousands and millions of others. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. That's what he'll say to them. You stopped the world. You stopped the world proclaiming your false religion. And you filled the world with hate and murder. And now you're standing before Judge Jesus, the one who will impart grace to you. Forgiveness, reconciliation, the grace and the love and the life of God. But you would have none of it. You would have none of it. You carried on prophesying your damnable lies along with many other religions. Oh, many will say, we did wonderful things in your name, Jesus. We healed the sick, we gave eyesight to the blind. Jesus said, lying wonders. Lying wonders. Deceiving wonders. Even the devil, even Satan, even the old, that ancient serpent, the devil, even he does tricks like that, my friend. Even he does tricks like that. No, Jesus will tell them, all you performed was nothing but lying, deceitful wonders. Depart from me ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Oh, some will even claim that they cast out devils in the name of Jesus. We cast devils out of people. We set them free from satanic forces. Oh, we did many wonders in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus will tell them, because you are devils yourself, because you are devils yourself, because you are opposed to me, 
because you never knew me, because I never knew you, because everybody Jesus knows comes to know him, because you never knew my grace, you never knew my love, you never knew my mercy, you never knew my kindness, you never knew my forgiveness, you never knew that my blood was shed for your sins, you never knew you were blind, lost, ruined. Depart from me. I never knew you. Get out of my sight, ye workers of iniquity. He will say. Oh, I tell you, my friends, be careful. Be careful. Beware, my friends. False prophets and false preachers abound in your world today. The confusion is astonishing because it's the last of the last days. The end is nigh. And that's not just an empty cliche. No, no, the end is nigh, my friends. The confusion is great. And Jesus says, even the elect, even those whom he has chosen will be deceived. Unless that is, unless that is, they know and understand the truth, God's word, unless they have spiritual discernment, unless they have spiritual understanding, but you can only get that by being born again. You have no spiritual wisdom. You have no spiritual understanding. We're all of us daft and stupid until we're born again. Natural man receiveth not the things of God cannot discern them. Why Jesus says, ye must be born again, except a man be born again. He cannot see, perceive, understand the things of God. How can you understand the spiritual realm when there's no spiritual life in you? Jesus must impart life to you first. He is, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one that is that raises the dead to life, that gives life to dead souls, makes men and women alive in themselves. He gives them eternal. He gives them everlasting life. He gives them what religion can, can't give them. He gives them what Islam can't give them. He gives them what the Pope of Rome can't give them. He gives them what the Watchtower Society can't give them. He gives them life, life eternal, life from the dead. Jesus. And unless you know, unless you know, unless you're known of him, by him, he will say to you in that day, depart from me ye workers of iniquity. The word of God, the word of God declares, my friend, who and what a prophet is. The law of Moses tells us how we can discern a true prophet. Yeah? Moses, the Pentateuch, the Torah, wherever you're coming from, the law of Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 18. This is how you'll know if a man is a true prophet or not. If what he says comes to pass, you will know that he is a true prophet. He will speak according to the word of God, the infallible Bible. And if they speak not according to this word, he says, it's because there's no light in them. So that rules out Islam, that rules out Rome, the Watchtower Society, all your world religions are ruled out because they do not speak according to this word. They're false prophets. Muhammad's an imposter. And the inventor of a barbaric religion. False to the core of its being. And unless you get out of it, 
unless you get out of it and get out of your sin and get into the truth. Unless you're born again, unless the grace of God comes to you, imparting life to you, understanding, illumination, so that you're able to read God's word with understanding, with knowing, and seeing the truth of God's word that you were conceived and that you were born in sin and walk and live in sin all your days unless the grace of God is imparted to you, the free gift of God imparted to you. Making you alive from the dead. Imparting the love of God to you. Bringing you to an experience of God's love. Standing before the cross of His Son, Jesus Christ, who bled and died for sinners. Yeah. And some of those sinners are Islamists. Some of those sinners belong to Mecca's crowd. Some of those sinners belong to Rome. Some of those sinners belong to the Watchtower Society. The most of them, I would say, today in the United Kingdom belong to the, the religion of evolutionism. All the same. Just dead religion, that's all it is. But God, God has his people among such. And God will impart his grace to them. And he'll bring them out of his land. He'll bring them out of Rome. He'll bring them out of the watchtowers. He'll bring them out of their dead religion. He'll bring them to life. He'll bring them to grace. He'll bring them to his love. That's what he sent his son into the world to die for. So that his people might live. Eternally. Everlastingly. Given life. By the author of life. Jesus Christ himself. So the ultimate profession is, my friends, does Jesus know you? He says in them, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. It's not your profession of him. It's his profession of you. Does he know you? Were you given to him by his father before the foundation of the world? And will the father draw you to Jesus? Because no one can come to me, says Jesus, except the father who sent me draws him. And through the preaching of the gospel, that what I'm doing today is the means by which God draws sinners religious and otherwise draws them to his son Jesus Christ that they might behold the son of God and that they might yield, surrender to him in repentance and faith believing unto salvation believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved but the false the false professor and those religionists, I never knew you, he said. Your claim is a false one. You use my name. You use my name all over the world. You profess my name. But you never, you never ever had any connection with me. You were never related to me. You were never a member of my family. In order to be a member of God's family, you have to be adopted. God has to adopt you. And you know, well, you know the rules, don't you? The parent, the father has to agree to the adoption. It's not down to the kid. It's not down to the child. It's down to the father. Well, the head of the home, well, he Will he agree to the adoption? You see, the moment, 
that a sinner truly believes in Jesus. That moment, that moment from God, they receive a pardon. The judge, the judge declares them to be righteous in his son Jesus Christ. And then he steps down from the bench and he takes his judge's robes off and he hugs the sinner and says, welcome to my family. Adopted a child of God by the grace of God. Not because you've done anything good, because you never have. Not because you're a good person, because you're not. Not because of anything in you. The truth of the matter is that what you deserve is the very opposite. Hell's damnation. But by the grace of God saved. That's how sinners are saved. Not by religiosity. Not by subscribing to a religion. Not being baptized. Not being attending a church. Not with head knowledge. Heart knowledge. The grace of God coming to your heart. And changing. And transforming you. Out of one family. The family of, of the devil. And into the family of God. Righteous forevermore. Oh, oh my friend, in that day, the divine sentence will be declared. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Friends, there's a man coming round and he's taking names and he decides who to bless and who to blame. His name is Jesus. And the day is appointed when he will judge all men. God will judge them by his son Jesus Christ. So make sure you call upon his name. But make sure you don't do it in profanity. Make sure you don't blaspheme that lovely name. Make sure you don't curse with that lovely name. Make sure you don't use it in vain. And make sure that you don't think to yourself because you use the name that you're good with God. Because without the grace of God, you're not good with God. That's why he has to come with his grace. That's why he had to send his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. So that through him, grace might be imparted to you. That you might be rescued. That you might be delivered from the present wrath of God that I tell you even now is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men but delivered also from the fierce and dreadful wrath of God to come. Oh, the end is nigh. Jesus, the only mediator, sir, the only mediator between God and man, get right with God by grace. Cry out to him for grace. Cry out to him in this way, say to him, Lord God, you said, your, you said your grace was a gift, a free gift. May I have your grace, please. Plead with him. Plead with him on your knees. Go home. Shut your door. Nail it shut if you have to and get on your knees and cry out to him and tell him I need your grace more than I need to live. Give me grace or I die. Give me grace that I might live. That in that day, you might not hear these words, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity but that you might hear these words. 
Well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Jesus bids you today, while it is still day, night cometh when no man can work. Jesus admonishes you today also, repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word. Read about the grace of God. How that grace may come to you. Like a copy of God's Word. Freely offered to you. No cost. No obligation to you. You're simply for the taking. You'd like one. Feel free to come and ask for one. May God bless you in the mercy, also Mercy I see upon your precious, precious, never-dying souls.